Okay, I can confirm we're now live. Thank you. Thank you very much, Liam. Uh, so, good morning uh, and welcome to this meeting of the Licensing 2003 Act Subcommittee to consider the application for a premises license for Childerley Orchard on the Childerley Estate. Um, so, I'd like to welcome um, uh, Louise Young uh, and the team from Strawberries and Cream. Um, could I just check that all of you are present? If I just call your names, could you just uh, respond verbally? Thank you. So Simon Taylor, who's the legal advisor? Uh, yes, I'm present. Great. Ben Were, Proud Events? I'm present. Thank you. Aisha Francis, I can see you're there. <laughs> Thank you, Aisha. Uh, Louise Young? Hello, yes, I'm here. Great, thank you. Simon Joins, your noise management consultant. That's correct, I'm here. Thank you. Tom Sturmey, traffic management. He sends his apologies, he couldn't make it this morning. OK, thank you very much. Um, and I, I will now just go through and um, point out the other. Now, I will pause at that point. I know there are members of the parish council. Um, perhaps I'll do, I will just check. Um, could I just check that the councillor Elizabeth Pyle is here from Dry Drayton Parish Council? I am. Thank you. And Peter Deer, who's the chairman of Ellsworth Parish Council? Yes, I'm present. Lovely. Thank you very much. OK, so welcome, everybody. Um, there are other people in the meeting who I'll introduce shortly, but um, I'd just like to introduce myself. I'm councillor Anna Bradnam and the other members of the panel present are councillors Bill Handley uh, and Deborah Roberts. Good morning, everybody. Thank you. Um, before we introduce ourselves further, um, the panel members need to appoint a chair for this hearing. So members, may I have nominate? Sorry, have you any nominations for the chair, please? Um, yes, I would like to uh, nominate Councillor Anna Bradnam for this morning's hearing as chairman, please. Thank and you I'm much. happy to support that. Thank you very much. Thank you. So um, could I just ask um, me the members of the panel to introduce uh, which wards they represent, please? So uh, Councillor Roberts. Um, yes, good morning again, Chairman. Uh, I'm District Councillor for the Foxton Ward. Um, Chairman, would it be helpful if I also declare the interest now? I've uh, previously sat on hearing panels, licensing hearing panels for the strawberries and cream um, applications, um, but I come to this matter afresh. Thank you, um, Councillor Roberts. And Councillor I'm, Handley? I'm, good morning, I'm, I'm Bill Handley. Uh, I'm the elected member for the villages of Over and Willingham. Thank you very much. And. Um, while we're in the business of declarations, I will also declare uh, that I sat on a panel um, for a strawberries and cream event at their previous location. So like Councillor Roberts, I come to this matter afresh since it is a fresh application. So um, can I also point out we have a number of officers present. We have a legal advisor, uh, <coughs> Mr Paul Weller. Mr Weller, would you like to put your camera on and introduce yourself? I have just done so. It doesn't act as quickly as my finger, but my name is Paul Weller. I'm the legal advisor for the panel this morning. Thank you. We saw you briefly and then you disappeared again. <laughs> um, and the licensing officer, uh, Miss Miss Jackson. Uh, hello. Yeah, my camera is on, but it's not working, unfortunately. So hello, my name is Jane Jackson and um, I'm the licensing officer. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, the clerk to the committee of the panel. Hi, I'm Victoria Wallace from Democratic Services and my role here is to keep a note of the proceedings. And also I'd like to introduce Miss Suzanne Christie. Would you like to say your role? Hi, I'm Suzanne Christie. I'm the Environmental Health Officer that's been working with Strawberries and Cream on the Safety Advisory Group and um, pre pre-application work with them on conditions. <laughs> Thank you very much, Miss Christie. Um, I believe we may also have uh, one of our Democratic Services Officers here, Aaron Clark. 
Aaron's not present, Anna, um, but we have a new member of the team, Tom Smith, who's present just to observe. Thank you very much. Um, uh, that's helpful. And also, I just wanted to point out to the people here that we also have two members of the licensing team, Rachel Jackson and Brooke O'Neill, who are uh, from the licensing team, who are also observing this meeting. Thank you very much. Um, so the way we'll run this is in a moment, I will ask the licensing officer, Ms Jackson, to present her report. I will then invite the applicant to present their case and uh, then there'll be representations um, at various stages from um, the parish councils. But at each stage, I will invite the subcommittee to ask questions of the applicant. Um, other representations um, are invited and we can ask questions at each stage. Um, so, Mrs Jackson, can I just check with you, are we expecting any representation other than in writing from the other statutory uh, authorities? No, no, we're not. Only that which we've had in writing. OK, thank yeah. you. Um, so following each of the representations, members of the subcommittee will be invited to ask questions. And when we do that, I'd ask that wherever possible, people, um, those asking a question when invited by me, that they put their camera on if possible. If not, that's fine. Um, so. Uh, the other thing is that by the nature of um, these electronic meetings, if anybody drops out, please um, do you know make that known uh, through your colleagues. Uh, and if we could just somebody put it in chat and we'll just keep an eye an, an eye on that just to see if there's any problem. And if there's a good reason to, we'll pause and wait for that person so that they can come back on. Um, the other point is that um, I, uh, I'll just go through a further part. Once the discussion has concluded, the hearing will close for the panel to conduct its deliberations in private. At this point, the applicant, the legal representative and the licensing officer will leave the hearing and the live streaming of the hearing will end. And at that point, members of the panel will remain in the meeting to deliberate and reach a decision. The panel's legal advisor and clerk will remain with the panel for those deliberations. Um, and following the deliberations, all parties will be notified of the decision in writing, and this will be published on the Council's website as soon as possible. Um, also, for everybody's comfort, I intend to call a five minute break around about 12 o'clock, and I think we'll break for lunch around about one o'clock uh, at a convenient time in the in the proceedings. And if I forget, do feel free to remind me. So we've had declarations from Councillor Roberts and from myself. Does any does does uh, any any other member of the panel have any declaration? None from me. Thank you. Councillor. None from me, Chairman. But can I just clarify, Chairman? Um, do you want us to use the um, the uh, Councillor Hanley and I to use the chat, uh, or are you happy if we put our hands up? Sometimes no. my chat function doesn't work very well on this machine. No, that's fine. I'm happy for you and Councillor Handley to put your hands up visually. Okay. Thank you so much. That's fine. OK, so um, let's move on then to um, Miss Jane Jackson uh, to present the report, please. Ms Jackson, are you there? I can hear lots of scuffling of papers. Don't know anything. Is Ms Jackson there? Uh, Victoria, could you just clarify whether Ms Jackson is still with us? Yeah, I'm just having a look through the list of people in this meeting. It looks like she might have dropped out. Oh. Yeah, I think she has. 
That was good timing, mm. wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so just need to give her a few minutes to get back in. <laughs> Would members of the meeting be happy to just pause a moment while we wait for Miss Jackson to come back? I'm I sorry. Think actually, she is here. She's she appears to be present. She might just be okay. having issues. There we go. Can you hear me? Yeah, sorry, the, the mute button doesn't want to work for some reason on Teams, but um, so apologies for that. OK, so so Miss Jackson, if you would give your report, that would yeah. be great. OK, the application to grant a new premises license for map reference TL3555760586, known as Childerly Orchard, was received by the licensing department on the 8th of February 2021 and was sent out for consultation. The application proposes a new premises license to operate for up to eight days over two weekends to take place between the 1st of May and the 30th of September annually. The premises is a field comprising of flat glassland, which can be identified from the map reference quoted above previously, um, which is also known as Childerly Orchard. The proposed application is to carry out the following activities, the provision of films, provision of plays, provision of recorded music, provision of live music, provision of anything of a similar description to live music, recorded music or performance of dance, provision of performances of dance, late night refreshments and the supply of alcohol for consumption on the premises only. The application was sent to all the responsible authorities for consultation as part of that licensing application process. Notification of the application was also sent to neighbouring parish councils. The blue notice was correctly displayed and the notice of application was advertised in the Cambridge Evening News. Representations have been received from interested parties and responsible authorities and the applicant has been made aware of these. The applicant responded to the representations on the 18th of March. And following this, representation four for Bar Hill Parish Council withdrew their representation. Supplement one to the agenda shows the response to Dry Drayton Parish Council's questions in relation to the applicant's response to their representation. And supplement two to the agenda is a copy of the applicant's legal advisor's proposed premises license conditions. Members, when considering this application, should be made aware that they may only take into account uh, the parts of the application which, which represent the licensing objectives, and that is the prevention of crime and disorder, public safety, the prevention of public nuisance, the protection of children from harm. Members have the right under the Licensing Act 2003 to determine this application after considering any relevant representations. Members may accept the proposed application as submitted, reject the application, or agree the application but impose conditions that promote the relevant licensing objectives. And all parties will remain, maintain, sorry, the right of appeal to magistrate's court after determination of this committee. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. I just wanted to ask you one further question. Um, we understand the consultation went out to all parish councils, but we've only had representations back from Ellsworth, Dry Drayton and Bar Hill, who subsequently withdrawn. Can I just check that the other parish councils of Knapwell, Childerley and the closer other parish, you know, Caldecott, for example, that they also were contacted, but they chose not to respond. Is that correct? Yep, that's correct. There were four that responded, Hardwick as well. Sorry, yes, that's right. Yep. OK, thank you. OK, thank you very much. Um, did anybody have any um, other matters, just purely matters of clarification to the officer? No, Chairman. OK, right. So let's now hear from the applicant. Is that uh, going to be yourself, Aisha? Who is responding on behalf of the applicant? Or is that Mr. Taylor or Mr. Wurr? Uh, it will be Simon, Mr. Taylor. Simon Taylor. Simon Taylor. Oh, thank you. OK, so um, let's hear your representation, please. Now. Um, I propose to speak to three specific areas. Um, I'm aware that it is a, a lengthy agenda 
that you have with a lot of information and I'll try and not uh, repeat what's in um, the agenda papers. Um, I'd like to say a few words about the application and the two events that are proposed uh, if the license is granted. And I'd also like to introduce the applicant um, and give you some information about the applicant and the competence of Proud Events, who are the production company. Uh, secondly, I would like to uh, amplify some key points in the application. And thirdly, um, I'd like to highlight highlight how the applicant will provide uh, um, or sorry, will promote the licensing objectives. So starting with the application itself, the application is for two event weekends which take place between the 1st of May and the 5th of September each year. Originally, the scheduled dates for 2021 were in June, but these have been rescheduled uh, due to COVID. These have been rescheduled to the 30th of September um, in 2021. Um, the Cambridge Club is scheduled to take place between the 10th and 13th of September and strawberries and cream between the 17th and 20th um, of September. Um, this year, strawberries and cream is scheduled for two days, but it's hoped to expand it to three days under the license. And there's provision for that in the application. And uh, Cambridge Club is scheduled for three days of, of entertainment uh, this year. The hours are all set out in the report, so I'm not going to repeat those. Um, one point that I would make when looking at those um, timings, um, the main stage um, and the festival site itself is going to close at 11 p.m. And it's only in the campsite that there are the longer hours uh, which are requested. Um, I'd also uh, confirm, and this is in condition 12 of the proposed conditions, um, that there will be no licensable activities in, in the work or accommodation areas. Um, and uh, again, the condition which provides uh, for the uh, main site closure and the camping areas condition in the proposed uh, conditions. Sorry, Mr. So, so those are, those are the. Mr. Taylor, would you be so kind as just to repeat? We we lost you. You froze for a moment. Could you just go back over what you've just said? That last sentence. Uh, I, I I took you to condition eighty six of the proposed conditions, uh, which deals with the closure of the festival site at twenty three hundred hours and the camping area with one music source at 0200 hours the following morning. OK, and the condition 12? Uh, condition 12 dealt with uh, no licensable activity in the work or accommodation areas. Thank you. OK, right, moving on. Um, the capacity that is proposed. The total capacity proposed under the license is 24,999, 24,999 persons, and that includes um, staff, contractors, artists, etc. So that's everybody on site. However, there are conditions which limit that in the first year to 14,999, in year two, to 19,999 and in year three onwards to 24,999. So if I can be colloquial, there is a suck it and see proposal for three years before the maximum capacity can be authorised. Um, this is all contained in condition 46 of our proposed conditions and I should emphasise that we propose that the increases can only take place if it if they are agreed in writing by the licensing authority. 
Um, this sort of phased increase is not unusual in my experience in licences. Uh, major festivals such as Leeds, Reading Festival and festivals in the London parks um, have, have adopted this approach in the past and um, it has worked. Um, the other fundamental point that I'd like to make with regard to this application is that there is a procedure which is contained in the conditions beginning at condition three at page three of the second supplemental report, which I'll refer to later in detail, but there is a procedure that has to be gone through each year before, effectively, before the um, events are authorised. As I say, I'll, I'll return to that later. Um, one other thing I'd like to mention um, is that there is a small camping provision proposed this year. Um, that is an addition. Um, it's a mo modest provision in 2021 uh, for up to 1,000 um, attendees. And there will be a properly regulated and authorised um, campsite um, on the site itself. Um, with regard to site capacity, because uh, in a sense you're looking at 15,000 people this year, but 25,000 people potentially in the future. I just wanted to mention the capacity. Um, this is a new site, it's a larger site than before, and frankly there is not an issue, uh, nor will there be an issue with capacity um, in years to come. Over the size, there is an area of 155,000 square metres in the total site. That is then broken down by calculations um, for, for instance, infrastructure, um, which we have to put on the site, which obviously reduces the audience capacity. But what I can tell you is our calculations involving stages, emergency site access, egress calculations, exit widths from structures, all demonstrate that the maximum capacity of, please, I'll, I'll use the round figure, it's quicker to say, 25,000 people um, can be safely accommodated um, in the future. Uh, of course, for any future um, application, um, all of this will be dealt with through a SAG process, which is part of the procedure that I mentioned. Uh, so there will be, going forward, there will be no difficulties in proper scrutiny of the capacity uh, when, whenever that arises. Um, if I can now move on to the events themselves, and you may have previous knowledge of this, the Cambridge Club was an event that was founded in 2017. Um, previously, it's taken place over one day. Uh, the demographic is typically um, between families with children uh, to pensioners, and there is a wish to expand this uh, to accommodate uh, more families going forward. Um, it's described as a festival of music, arts, culture and good food. The, the activities that will take place in addition to music are comedy, uh, talks, discussions, wellness, um, delicious food and dining, family entertainment and high-end glamping. Um, previously it was held over one day and the intention is to expand it um, to three days. Strawberries and Cream first took place in 2014 and it's well established on the festival calendar. The Democrat, sorry, the demographic is 18 to 30 year olds um, and it is an over 18 event. Um, it's an event described as having modern genre of music and youth culture. Um, both events are popular locally. Uh, particularly so the Cambridge Club, where the vast majority of the audience is locally based. And we estimate uh, from data of previous events that Strawberries and Cream has a 75% audience local uh, take up. Um, I would also point out to you as well um, that um, environmental health 
have inserted a condition or proposed a condition um, for the license, which obliges us to give details of the artists who are going to be at the uh, their perform at the various um, events. Uh, moving on to the applicant, the applicant is Strawberries and Cream Limited. Uh, that company has recently been purchased by Semblar, which is a well-established uh, London-based promoter. And that promoter itself is owned by the Sony Music Group. Um, this acquisition will enable both events to grow and develop their potential. Um, can, can I also mention the change of site? Um, there are a number of benefits with the site. Um, the move has been occasioned uh, for several reasons, but one of one of those was um, a recommendation from the police that uh, we needed to find a site with um, better access. Uh, we have gone out and done that, and it's notable that there is no representation before you um, objecting to this uh, event uh, from the police. So we have found a better site. It is a better site because it's larger, there is more room to grow, because it's in a better location further from Cambridge City Centre, and um, they're, they're the transport hubs for bringing people to the site can be off-site, uh, which is more efficient. It enables us to provide a better offering to our customers, um, both in terms of the site itself, but also the investment um, in artists. And also, um, we have appointed Proud Events, or Proud Events have been appointed, um, who are very experienced in the organisation of events, which I'll speak about in a moment. Um, there will all, a larger event will also provide um, greater benefit to the local economy. Turning to Proud Events, that company was established in 2014. The owners of it, and one of the directors is Mr. Wurr, the directors have over 50 years experience in the live events industry. Mr. Wurr, is a director of Proud Events. He is also to be the DPS at the events on site. Um, he has seven years experience as event director of the event known as Pride in London, which involves a march of 35,000 persons through London with between three quarters and a million spectators. The company also has vast experience of festivals with capacities up to 65,000 persons, persons in this country and abroad. They design and deliver events which include the planning, build, performance and takedown of those events. In addition, they have experience of dealing with a number of key contractors who will bring specialist service to these events such as security, noise management, transport management, medical provision, litter and waste management and welfare to mention just a few. I'd like to move on now to um, the second area, the key points about the application. Both the applicant and Proud Events understand that partnership is the key to safe and successful delivery of events. That partnership is, involves partnership with the licensing authority, responsible authorities, local community and businesses. They're mindful that the Section 182 guidance recognises all of what I've just said and that knowledge from, um, from all of those uh, bodies uh, are, invi are invaluable are invaluable to the organisation um, of events. To achieve this, Proud have already reached out to all of these groups. The applicant's planning and feasibility study began in August 2020, with the site being identified by Proud and their key contractors. Contact was made with the safety advisory group on the 5th of October, a provisional operating schedule was provided on the 8th of October 
and a site visit with key members of SAG took place on the 15th of October. The police were invited but couldn't attend at that time. Involvement with SAG has continued with two further meetings, one on the 24th of November, which was pre-application, and the other was on the 16th of February, which was post-application. The application itself was prepared in December 2020 and received significant input from licensing, environmental health and the police, which was concluded by the 16th of December and the application itself was lodged on the 8th of February. In addition to SAG, um, we formed a number of subgroups, for example, the transport subgroup, which comprises local highways, um, our traffic and our traffic and transport consultants, and there are two, um, Stagecoach, who are providing the shuttle buses, and a park and ride, our park and ride team managing the park and ride. Um, this was done early in the process so that it met on the 1st of December and has met again on the 8th of February. Um, in addition to the responsible authorities, we've also engaged in consultation. So, for example, an email with a consultant deck which explained our plans for the event, which was attached to the emails. Emails were sent out um, to the MP, local MP, um, to the county councillor, to district councillors for Caldercott and Hardwick, and to parish councils, Childerley, Caldercott, Hardwick and Rye Drayton. Um, we didn't receive any responses on those. Um, secondly, in December, we did a letter drop of, to 517 properties of local residents and businesses. This letter provided details of the events, um, offered Zoom meetings and gave an email address so that we could set up an emailing list uh, to share comments and information with local residents and businesses. In response, one person attended a Zoom meeting with us and three people joined our mailing list. In due course, we informed those on the mailing list of our application uh, becoming live and being lodged mm. and gave them details of the website uh, where it could be viewed and offered calls and further meetings, Zoom meetings uh, to discuss events. Um, communication from all of this consultation, um, the, the responses that we've received were those uh, which you have before you in the representations from the parish councils uh, and we haven't received any other responses um, uh, at all. Um, going forward, um, SAG meetings have been scheduled for the 20th of April and there is a tabletop meeting which will stress test our event management plan uh, that is scheduled for the uh, 20th of July. Um, we have deliberately um, made this uh, the tabletop meeting uh, for the 20th of July so that there is plenty of time uh, between July and the proposed events uh, to tweak any of the plans um, as necessary. Um, in addition, there will be numerous sub meetings which will take place. For example, there will be sub meetings with security, our security and the police. Um, there are many, many items will need to be finalised, such as the security deployments and that sort of thing. Um, the transport subgroup um, is clearly scheduled to meet further to discuss transport. And there is to be a public health subgroup um, to monitor developments with COVID-19. Uh, the noise management plan, there's already been a sub-meeting on the 2nd of March, uh, and it's, uh, it's anticipated by us that there will be a further meeting uh, to finalise uh, the noise management plan, uh, which has 
uh, being prepared, being scrutinised, but is still in draft stage. Um, so, so that is the planning process. I, I, I would also add that um, whilst we have consulted with or attempted to consult with parish councils by meetings, etc. Um, of course, we're open to uh, further discussions, meetings. We have an open door policy uh, towards parish councils, towards residents uh, to contact us with concerns or requests for information. What I'd like to do now is turn to the third part, the final part of the uh, presentation, which is um, the promotion of the licensing objectives and, and, and mention that. Um, section 18 of the application, uh, which is in your papers at 27 to 39, um, is a narrative of how the licensing objectives uh, will be addressed. And I am, I am absolutely certain that you have all read that uh, thoroughly. Um, in addition, we have prepared a set of draft conditions which are in the supplementary bundle, the second supplementary bundle at pages 3 to 16. Um, these conditions were prepared by me in consultation with my clients um, and, um, it, um, and were sent on the 15th of March um, to licensing 